This is the second incident involving um, shots fired with an officer this week. Coming up on Sunrise, an attempted arrest turns into a police shootout. What we know about the Woodlawn neighborhood shooting that left one person in the hospital. Plus, Tropical Storm Helene is on the move. We'll have a closer look at the storms impacted and the impact there in just a minute. And a live report from Jay Gray covering the devastation in Tallahassee coming up at 530. Plus, he bought a male and a female and thought he'd make a lot of money, you know, breeding potbelly pigs in his backyard. These little piggies didn't go to market, but instead made their way to Estacada Sanctuary. Why nearly two dozen pigs had to be rescued from a Gresham backyard. Good morning and thank you for joining us on your Friday here. Busy day here locally as well as, you know, covering Helene and you have that covered. You have traffic in a second, but locally we have some other as well. Uh, we do. We have that weak front coming through. Uh, here's a look at radar. Um, Chris and I have been, uh, you know, chattering back and forth that on the one hand it's been just light rain and mouse, but on the other hand it's really wet outside. <laughs> Seattle's had it, Portland's had it, Vancouver's had it. So far the rain is, well, there's a little bit now just nipping down around uh, Marion County. This is uh, been so far mainly the North Valley, Portland up into Vancouver, but this is another shot of pretty widespread rain that is light in intensity moving across the area. The cloud deck is low, which is what you're seeing here or not seeing from the Wells Fargo Tower. Uh, rain drops out at the airport and 59 degrees. The showers could easily linger through mid morning, like nine o'clock hour. We'll see eventually by the noon hour, we're all dry, becoming partly cloudy. And then later today, sun and 74. Now to the man who first told me, Rod, it's wet outside. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing how you have that million dollar radar to tell you that it's wet. Yeah, it is wet. It is certainly drippy out there this morning. As we take you over to the east side, uh, possible fender bender here. This is over on 205 northbound, actually over on the access road uh, near Powell Boulevard. So look, well, it was there a minute ago. Uh, we'll switch gears real quick, take you down to I-5 at 217. And sorry for the pixelated cameras here, but I think you get an idea for just how wet the roads are this morning. Despite that, uh, China, no major freeway trouble out there just yet. We're off to a good start. Chris, thank you. We start at six with a look at the path of Tropical Storm Helene. This is live right now. It's starting to move out of Georgia and up into the Carolinas and Tennessee. Now we want to show you some video of the areas impacted by Helene so far. So we'll start in Florida where rescuers are underway this morning as people all across the state get their first glimpse of the devastation. Just about the entire state is under a state emergency and at least one million people are without power just in Florida and in Georgia, a woman, her baby and her dog had to be rescued from rising floodwaters in Atlanta. The state is under flash flood warnings and as you can see, for good reasons there, about 800,000 people are without power right now in Georgia. Be sure to stay with KGW and NBC for all the latest on Tropical Storm Helene. There will also be much more coverage on the Today Show coming up after sunrise at 7. Our top story here locally, a suspect shot and injured by Portland police is now in custody at the hospital. Police tried to arrest him Thursday evening for violent felonies when gunshots were exchanged. Our Thomas Schultz joins us live near Northeast 17th and Deacon Thomas. What do we know now? Yeah, well, China, that suspect is being treated at the hospital for non life threatening injuries. No police officers were hurt. Now, this all started when members of PPP's tactical team tried to arrest the suspect as part of a larger investigation. Detectives called for the help because the suspect was wanted for several violent felonies, including involving a gun. Here's a photo from police showing the semi-automatic gun he had with him, and it was around 620 when the suspect and police first exchanged gunfire. Police say three PPB CERT team members fired their guns, injuring the suspect. After that, a team medic tended to him until an ambulance arrived. And Thursday, Portland Police Chief Bob Day reiterated the danger officers face in incidents like this one. I want to just really express my gratitude to the members of the Portland Police Bureau for their service, for their sacrifice, for their willingness to step in to these spaces on a daily basis. Now, those three officers will be paced, placed on administrative leave. That's standard protocol in incidents like this one. Police say that that body camera footage that those officers were also wearing will soon be released in the coming weeks. China. Our Thomas Schultz reporting live for us this morning. Thank you, Thomas.
In the meantime, Portland police say one person was hurt in a shooting in Old Town. This happened at Northwest 8th and Cooch just before 9 last night. Authorities say one person was taken to the hospital with serious injuries. No word on any suspect or suspects. The Malala River School District has closed all schools today after receiving a threat on social media on Wednesday. In a message to parents, the district says a middle school student was taken into custody and that the school closure will give police time for a thorough investigation. All activities and athletics indoor and outdoor are also canceled. In Forest Grove, Pacific University is responding to hate speech and violent threats that it says were posted online specifically against members of the Black Student Union. The university says it became aware of the anonymous posting, which included racial slurs on Tuesday and has reached out to law enforcement. The university says it's working to identify IP addresses of the person who published that post. Francis and Claire Place held its grand opening in the Buckman neighborhood yesterday, and it is the newest permanent supportive housing complex to be run by Catholic Charities. The 61 unit building is focused on helping people who want and need services like counseling, drug and alcohol treatment as well. Oftentimes we see ourselves uh, moving the problem around to different parts of a region, but this is part of that solution where uh, people get the treatment they need and the housing to live in. The state, metro, county, and city all played a role in funding this. Residents were referred by a county-wide wait list and will start moving in next week. Okay, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. It's not even October yet, but the spooky season is getting started in St. Helens this weekend. The spirit of Halloween Town kicks off tomorrow night with the pumpkin lighting and runs all month long. All the information is on your screen. And of course, the celebration is a nod to the Disney classic Halloween Town movies. I am so excited to go there this year. I love those movies growing up and now to be able to go there, childhood dream. Period. All right. <laughs> I, I will tell you it's fun. I've done my live shots. I know Drew has over mm -hmm. the years from there as well. Uh, again, it's, it's centered right in downtown St. Helens. They've got the, the perfect setting with the old courthouse and the square in front of it and the haunted houses that I've been to over the years are really good ones. So, uh, yeah, St. Helens, the season is here. Here's a look at our cold front on the wide satellite picture. It's the reason we have some light showers out there this morning. Um, and this will keep temperatures close to 70 throughout the weekend. See this stretch of clouds right here? Our futurecast models love these clouds coming in tomorrow. No rain with them, but Saturday might be a day that sees as many clouds on and off as it does sun. I do think Sunday is going to be a, a, the sunnier of the two days this weekend. Again, both days will be dry. All right, here's the radar right now. We've had rain showers from Seattle uh, down I-5, a little bit in Longview, and Portland's kind of been a bullseye of this light rain activity up into Vancouver. This is the last three hours, and even right now we're just getting on the back edge of what has been another batch of fairly widespread light rain moving through. There have been some traceable amounts of rain down in Marion County, but it looks to me like Salem has been either mainly dry or just some sprinkles. This has mostly been North Valley up into Clark County. There's a, the Rose City camera. You see the cloud deck is low. Again, we've had light rain at several shots at this point move across uh, the city. 59 degrees is the temperature. Uh, temperatures are fairly warm because of the cloud cover. So 58 in Sherwood. We've had some 60s. Uh, well, everybody's now under 60. 59 in Albany and Corvallis, Salem and Kaiser and Canby all at 59 degrees. All right, the weather map for today. This is a weak system, meaning it doesn't do anything over the Cascade. So the forecast is actually mostly sunny central and eastern areas. And a lot of you out in central and eastern Oregon watching us. Good morning. We'll see your highs up to about 80 degrees. We'll see increasing sunshine with a dry forecast this afternoon at the coast and here in the valley. Winds will be mainly light. 74 today, a mix of cloudiness and sun tomorrow. 73 fog to blue skies on Sunday. 70. I've lowered Monday. I had it in the 80s, but still 78 and clear skies. Gorgeous day. And then there's a shower chance on Tuesday. I've mixed this up behind a front. I now have us dry on Wednesday and Thursday as we get into the first days of October. And that's your update.